Howdy folks! So today I want to talk about USB cables. Um, in particular, the USB cables that look like this. Um, everyone, eventually, they break a cable, they lose a cable, they just need a longer cable. They turn to some third-party USB cable um, for their phone or whatever. And this is a very common design um, that you can find on sites like Amazon. And I'm not going to name any brands because this is a generic um, design that's been completely rebranded by many different companies, uh, but they all look the same. The connectors all look identical, and the braid looks identical. The only difference, of course, is that uh, this color sometimes varies. Uh, some of them are blue, some of them are white, some of them are red, but it's basically the same cable all around. And uh, they, you know, they claim all sorts of great things, um, you know, that they're, you know, they're fully copper, nicely, you know, nylon sheath, all this good stuff, high quality, you know, lots of bend cycles, all this stuff, and I decided I'd actually try them out, and I, I bought a pack, um, and I've actually liked them quite a bit, and they've been pretty good. Uh, but anyway, my girlfriend ended up buying, a, you know, totally unrelated, a, another uh, set of this from a different company, and they happened to be uh, white instead. And, and she, anyway, she ended up breaking one of the ends by just yanking on it way too hard, and of course it broke. So I thought, instead of throwing the cable out, I would take it apart and see if what's inside these actually lives up to what the manufacturer says, and see if, uh, you know, it actually kind of... Uh, if it's appropriate for the way it looks. So, uh, of course, she broke the micro BN, so this is the regular BN, and as you can see, um, it is exactly the same connector. The only difference here is that the braid is a different color. This one happens to be a 10-foot cable. This one happens to be, I think, like a 3-foot or something. But anyway, I'll keep that around. Uh, so the first thing I did, of course, was I cut the, uh, the cable open, and uh, I'll try and uh, zoom in a little bit here. And uh, so, of course, it's got four conductors. You wouldn't expect this to have uh, two conductors. Um, so, of course, we've got the D plus and D minus, um, and then we've got the two power wires here. And, uh, of course, you'll notice that the D plus and D minus are uh, thinner, which makes sense. They don't have to carry any substantial amount of current. Uh, but, of course, these uh, cables are primarily used for charging, and so, of course, you want the power wires to be as thick as possible. And the first thing that anyone uh, who isn't colorblind will probably realize is that uh, these wires are not copper colored, and it's because they aren't copper at all. Uh, all of the conductors in this are aluminum, um, and that is uh, not such a great thing. Now, I kind of expected that they would use aluminum for the data wires because, of course, um, you know, again, no, no substantial current required, but um, to see the data wires being aluminum is a little interesting. And it's solid aluminum. It's not even coated. Um, so these are not coated. It's not like it's copper coated in something. Um, it is truly aluminum all the way through. Um, I, I got a microscope a few months ago. You haven't seen it yet, but uh, I did take a look at this, and the thing is truly aluminum all the way through. And uh, this is kind of... It's not terrible, but it is uh, kind of a, a bad thing to see. First of all, the, literally the first line in the Amazon listings, I think, say um, high-quality four-core copper wires. Um, so, you know, right off the hop, it's wrong. Um, you know, they're lying to you as to what's in this. There isn't an ounce of copper in the entire cable. Um, uh, the co the uh, fact that it's aluminum may affect the uh, bend life. Um, it may break earlier. Um, and it also may affect the life of the hand soldered joints and the connectors on the ends because it's harder to solder uh, aluminum than it is to so so solder copper. And uh, that's one of the reasons why you will generally see um, sort of an intermediary um, uh, conductor type, which is copper-coated aluminum. So, you know, on the low end, you've got aluminum, then you've got copper-coated aluminum, then you've got copper on the top. And the reason that they do that is because, due to the skin effect, most of the electrons are flowing on the outsides of the uh, actual wire, and so if you put copper there, uh, it can increase the performance, and it also allows you to solder it a little easier because it's, of course, coated in copper. So it's something interesting to see. Um, as for the actual uh, material that's in here, of course, the, the sheath has... Uh, kind of rolled down, and it, of course, uh, kind of like a finger trap, it only goes one way, so it's kind of all the way down there now, just from being uh, cut. As soon as you get any nick in it at all, it, of course, it's just going to fall apart, uh, but that's kind of what you expect. It, it seems to seems to be pretty strong as far as uh, you know, cut resistance, so it's not a big deal. Um, this core, um, I'm almost certain it's just PVC. Uh, there doesn't appear to be anything special at all about it, uh, but it is at least a decent thickness, so... Um, there's there's no real concern that I have uh, on this, and the conductor is you know, fairly well centered in it. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty good. 
Um, so I, I, I'm not going to unskin the whole thing just to, to check how, you know, how uh, well regulated that is. But I don't see it popping out anywhere, so um, that's, that's good. Because sometimes if these are poorly made, you'll actually see one of the inner sleeves pop out the side where the conductor wasn't really centered in, in the extrusion machine when they were making this. But uh, so far I haven't seen that. So anyway, uh, on to the connector, of course, because uh, that's a little bit more interesting. And of course, uh, for reference, we've got the original uh, Micro-B connector here. This is one that uh, I have not taken apart. I took apart the connector off cameras because I wasn't sure how to get into it, how long that would take. And uh, you'll notice that uh, this clearly appears to be two pieces, and that's because this uh, body is actually made of what appears to be uh, aluminum. So this actually looks like it's, it's anodized. I don't think this is painted. This is just an anodized tube of black aluminum. And the, con the connector is effectively formed into this. So this is the deconstructed uh, version. And uh, you can see that, uh, of course, you've got the connector and the wires that come in on this side. And I've removed a whole bunch of potting material. It's uh, kind of a hard, um, it is slightly rubbery, but it's quite hard. Um, potting material that was inside this. And so the way I think they assemble this is they probably just take, um, you know, the connector, they solder it, put it in here, and then they fill it from the top. So from this side, they just basically pot the whole thing inside the resin, and then they overmold a little bit out here, which forms the um, absolute joke of a strain relief. And uh, so anyway, as for the connector itself, let me get you in a little bit closer here. Um, there's nothing super, super special about this connector. Um, it is, of course, hand soldered, um, which is fine for something you'd expect like this. Now, you can see the hand soldering quality on those joints there is uh, kind of trash. Um, but that being said, this would still pass a high pot test. Uh, the worst gap is the one at the top there, and I can tell you right away that this will pass a one kilovolt high pot, high pot test. I have a high pot tester. I probably could actually test this, but I'm not even going to bother because I know it's going to pass at least there anyway. Um, but because it's hand soldered, you know, it varies from cable to cable. So there may be some cables out there that are not very well done. Um, there's just really no way to know. Uh, the, the actual connector is made in two pieces. Of course, you've got the stainless steel shell with the uh, retaining pins. And then uh, you've got the actual real pins on the inside here. So, of course, there's the four that are connected plus the floating one, which is used for OTG, which, of course, doesn't go anywhere uh, in this particular cable design. And this is all just retained on this inner form here. Of course, this is all one piece and it's just never going to go anywhere. So, uh, you know, as for the design of this, it looks you know, perfectly standard. Um, I don't really have any complaints with this. Um, really, I, I don't. Um, of course, you know, it's it's the formed one. It's, um, it, you know, it does have the seam on the bottom, uh, but that's kind of to be expected. Uh, I actually don't know if they made any uh, fully... Uh, uh, like basically non-seam versions of the micro B. Of course, they do with the USB-C, but um, because this is an asymmetrical connector, I'm not sure if they ever did that. Um, but I, I sure I don't think I've ever seen one. But uh, yeah, this seems to be perfectly fine. It looks to be decently long. Uh, the pins look to be fine. There's, there's nothing really wrong with this, of course, except for the strain relief. Um, so showing you the strain relief here, the way I test mine, which is you know easy generic way to test strain relief, is just you know hold the hold the connector one way and 90 degrees to it, pull the cable and look at what the bend radius is. And so you can see, you know, the bend radius on that is just, it's atrocious. Um, you know, this being the strain relief isn't doing anything. Um, you know, this is basically Apple level strain relief. It's, it's, it's not there at all. Um, and of course, you know, we expect that it will likely fail right here. And uh, let me see, do I have any, uh, yeah, my scope pro or uh, multimeter probes. If I just go grab one here. So this actually has a, a functional strain relief on it. So if I do the same test, you can see here that the strain relief is actually working and it's limiting the bend radius of the cable. And so this is you know, reducing the, the, the pinch point here and it's, it's spreading the bend over a larger length of cable. So this is doing its job and you know, it's worth something, whereas uh, these cables don't really have any form of it. So, you know, you're, you're getting what you pay for in terms of that anyway. Um, now, you know, these being an aluminum core cable, um, the resistance is not bad. Um, so I actually tested um, just one of the power conductors from one end to the other. Like I said, this is a, looks like a 10-foot cable, and it's only about 
you know, it's, it's under half an ohm. So it's not bad, um, considering this is only going to be about two, you know, two amps, roughly. Um, it's not really that bad. And of course, it's going to be double that, uh, because of course, you just got to go through one and then return through the other. So, you know, we're looking at, you know, if, if I measured, um, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 ohms, you know, you're looking at, at 0.6 to 0.8 ohms um, across the whole cable. And this is, of course, the longest length that I've seen anyway. So it's not super terrible. Um, of course, you would get better if it was better conductor, but it's not that bad. I don't have an actual gauge with me, um, so I don't know the exact wire gauge, but I would say the power is probably 22 gauge um, or 24 gauge, and the the data lines are most certainly, you know, 30 gauge or, or 32 gauge or something. They're, they're much thinner. But anyway, um, that's really all there is to this. I just wanted to uh, take the opportunity to show you what's inside this, you know, know that you know, they are kind of lying as to what's inside here. And, uh, you know, you can expect the uh, reliability of this to go with it. But um, I just thought uh, that would be kind of interesting because these seem to be selling pretty well. And I've never seen anyone take them apart before. So, as always, thanks for watching.